Moving animals must sometimes adapt to difficult and changing conditions. In insects, we think that a region of the brain called the central complex oversees these adaptations. The central complex sits right in the middle of the brain and receives relays from many sensory systems. Many laboratories have suggested that it uses sensory information to alter ongoing movement. We and others have found neural responses to olfactory, tactile, and visual stimuli in the central complex of restrained animals. One study even showed that the orientations of polarized light cues are mapped there. On the motor side, damage to the central complex affects an insect's ability to perform adaptive behaviors. For example, cockroaches following a curved track may fail to turn when they encounter a wall, and fruit flies with genetic lesions have difficulty changing their step length as they walk faster. But there were no data linking neural activity in the central complex directly to changes in locomotion. In our laboratory, John Bender and Alan Pollock sought to provide this evidence by recording in the central complex of a walking cockroach. We took four very fine insulated wires and twisted them into a bundle called a tetrode. We inserted two of these wire bundles into the central complex of a large species of cockroach. The tetrode arrangement provides four different snapshots of each neural spike, allowing us to separate out events from different sources. We glued the cockroach to a plastic tether and then placed it above a lightly oiled glass plate. Then we used a high-speed video camera to record the animal's movements. When we went through these videos later, we could then correlate neural activity to stepping. When we compared the average step rate with the average firing rate of the neurons, we found many neurons in the central complex that tended to fire faster when the cockroach was walking faster. That made us wonder if those neurons were just responding to changes in body motions or actually causing them. To test this, we first calculated the firing rate and the step rate as continuous functions by convolving the event times with the Gaussian kernel. In several neural units, we found strong correlations between step rate and firing rate. But in this example, it's obvious that if we shifted the blue curve to the right, it would line up even better with the red curve. That means that changes in firing rate tended to occur before changes in step rate. Now in this video, we're showing those step rate and firing rate curves as bars. The height of the bar indicates the value of that continuous function at each frame in the movie. The video here is played back at about one-fourth of real speed. The clicks are the times of neural spikes, and the thunk, thunk, thunk sound is the beginning of a new step by the middle leg. You can clearly see changes in the firing rate of Unit 1 that occur before any changes in the animal's movements. But are these just correlations, or do these changes in activity actually cause changes in stepping? After we were done recording, we passed electrical current through the wires in order to stimulate the neurons in the area we were recording from. In at least a couple of animals, electrical stimulation caused consistent changes in step rate. In this video, the stimulation is indicated by a white box in the upper right corner. Regardless of what the cockroach was doing beforehand, the electrical stimulus causes it to speed up. This is pretty good evidence that increased neural activity in this area of the brain can cause increases in walking speed. Combined with what we found earlier, we think that this probably happens when the animal is walking on its own, not just while we were stimulating the neurons. So we've now found a neural substrate for the transformation that occurs between sensory responses and behavioral changes. There were suggestions before that this transformation probably occurs in the central complex. Our new data show a direct link between neurons in the central complex and behavioral modifications. We would very much like to know precisely which neurons are making these decisions, but at least now we know where to look 